Do better do better today on Do by the River. Welcome back to another regularly scheduled midweek podcast. We are breaking down last week as Philadelphia drew against the Minnesota United. And of course, we're going to look ahead as we face off against Club de Foot Montreal. Don't you dare go anywhere, guys, because you do not want to miss this episode of Do by the River. Let's get this started, guys. Eh, done it. Psych. Do by the river doesn't do anything well there is not one th- i'm sorry there was no creativity as a union fan i take that all day another dp we need to go get mario balotelli and i like that all right welcome guys to the first edition of that brand new intro welcome on in to do by the river the show where we follow everything philadelphia union universe we are brought to you by the Sports network before we dive into today, guys, thank you so much for tuning on in. Truly means the world to us. Make sure you guys hit that like button. Subscribe for more Do By The River as we broadcast here every single week. You can find Do By The River your podcast from Apple, Google, Spotify, Google, PSN Radio. You can find all your favorite Philly Sports Network podcasts on there. Let's get it today, guys. I'm gonna We're going to introduce our experts in Dupe today. And today, guys, w- listen, we love this league. We want to continue seeing this league gr- uh, grow. Great first match week, and I want to get your guys' biggest takeaway from match week one. So, ladies and gentlemen, first, let's welcome Mr. Zach Labasso. What's up, Zach? How you feeling, brother? What was your takeaway, man? man? How are you? Uh, My takeaway is that Carlos Vela is all the way back. Um, I (laughs) think after his down season last year, uh, he kind of came out guns blazing, put up three goals in 51 minutes. Um, and kind of just showed the league that you know, I, I'm going to score 30 plus goals again. So, I mean, he's a tenth of the way there already. So, Zach, um, Zach, not to take it to the NBA, but it was like when Steph Curry took a year off and then he came back and yeah, guns yeah, it was like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, it's just, I mean, greatness, greatness doesn't, uh, doesn't cease to exist in, in, in <laughs> someone. So, uh, as great as he is, like, even if you have it down here, like, it's always going to be there. And he came out. And his third goal, man, was absolutely outrageous. Um, so I look forward to watching him play uh, the rest of the season. Obviously, not when we go there. I hope he's like you know on vacation <laughs> or something. But um, yeah, he's. I think he's going to have a killer season. Might win Golden Boot again. Might win MVP. Uh, who knows? But uh, we'll see. Yeah, and shouts out to Amanda, who's one of our West Coast uh, listeners out there, is more likely going to attend that one. Uh, but, man, for sure, it's good to see him back, man. It's only good for the league. Uh, yeah. Reese, no, thank you so much. For, don't don't you dare, you know, don't don't you dare uh, worry. We'll, we always have these every week for you. You can listen to our every stream podcast, man. But we appreciate you checking in, man. Where comes first, brother? Where comes first? And, of course, let's introduce today to my brother, Justin Oh man, double fist to the chest, Steve Friedberg, of course, and not to our our this week's opponent. Uh, but of course, Justin, what is going on? And what was your biggest takeaway of this MLS week, brother? Uh, I'm I'm doing great. It's always great when the MLS season kicks uh kicks off this time, even earlier than usual. Um, my takeaway is, uh, boy howdy, is it gonna be a thrilling race for the wooden spoon? Because <laughs> Cincinnati made Austin look, you know, amazing. They're Charlotte had, up down there, man. <laughs> Charlotte had man. I watched the first half of that game. Oh boy, that was um. I kind of felt bad for them at certain points. Yeah, like yeah, because those pens that they gave up were. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it was it was soft, but and they had good fans show up. <laughs> oh yeah, no, they 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 had they had fans, but and you know, San Jose looked. Season, so- Oh yeah, and San Jose. <laughs> oh my god! Did you see where they played Jamiro? Yeah, like false 10. nine, and yeah, it was like a, at, at that point. Why don't you play weird, Kate Cowell at that position? Like he's more of a false nine than Jamiro. It was weird, oh, man. Lord. Yeah, San Jose looked really bad. <laughs> god, that's he just, won't change those tactics, huh? If, nah, nah. I mean, listen, he's like Bielsa. I, I said Live it. Yeah, it. Well, Almeida's Almeida's like Bielsa, but he's. He, uh, he he doesn't change it, and he, I I said from the beginning he's the coach who's on the biggest hot seat this year, and I wouldn't be surprised if he's the first one fired. If he wants to leave, and he's just like, how can I get out of here as soon as possible? He he already made comments in the uh, in the off season on a on a, on a radio station. I don't think it was in Argentina. That he was he was basically bad mouthing the team. It's like, dude, are you trying to get fired on your day off? <laughs> like, 
Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Uh, what I what I would say, gentlemen, is uh, my biggest takeaway is let's, let's not overreact. It is uh, the first the match one. week out of 34. except for those three teams that we talked about. Those are totally the norm for them. Well, well, the thing is, is you know, I also Justin brought up the the Austin um, and Cincinnati thing. Um, the LAB NYCFC, I wouldn't overreact over that. And also that too, I think of the late game that I wouldn't. Also, like Atlanta getting a big win against SKC without Polito and everyone's back to Atlanta's back. You know, they're going to, they're the MLS cup favorite again, but let, and of course, gentlemen, the biggest overreaction, possibly what I saw, uh, was this our match this, this past oh, Saturday. Oh, always. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's get right to it guys. Let's discuss. Cause I think there's a lot to talk about. Are we getting the one spoon? Is that, is that the reaction? We're <laughs> no, we oh. have a point, Justin. We can't finish last. <laughs> we're already ahead of so many teams. <laughs> <laughs> so, so obviously, guys, a, a one-one draw against Minnesota, and I, you know, obviously, if everyone listened to the preview, we were all pretty high on the Union in this match. I think I'll just predict a two-goal win over Minnesota, no matter what the score line would be. Um, but look, Minnesota definitely came to play, and I think we definitely need to give them their credit. Uh, the scoring started with Robin Lode in the twenty-third minute, unscathed. We, he can thank Olivier and Baizo kind of creating that for mm-hmm. Minnesota United. Uh, wide open in the box, gets a nice little touch. Not much Andre Blake could do there, and a one uh lead there for Minnesota. Uh, luckily, though, 12 minutes later, uh, believe it or not, listen, I, I honestly want to try putting Jakob Glasses as number nine because I feel like he could play any position on the pitch. He's out Even wide. Shuttler, man. That was a cross. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he crosses it in, and, and and a great run by Corey Burke. Let's give him some love too, and and the Philadelphia Union get up uh one one uh, one one, and they, they draw it up there. But I would say after that load uh, uh goal in the twenty third minute, I feel like the Union turned it back on. Uh, Minnesota had a couple nice chances. Um, a counterattack game for Minnesota. You know, so we talked about it in the last match. They were forcing turnovers, getting the counterattacks. Um, they really killed us like that. Uh, second half, I really felt like the Union uh, looked like the better of the two, but unfortunately, we walk away with the point. Definitely could have taken the three, but I think, in, in, like we just discussed, it is match week one, um, and we really shouldn't be uh, overreacting. Now, real quick, before we get into our take, uh, the line for, today, uh, for the match was a little bit of a surprise. Uh, all of us predicted that Christmas tree, Feliz Navidad, uh, didn't come to fruition. Jim wanted to stick to our main structure, and that is the 442 Diamond. Um, he obviously uh, went with the usual back four, uh, with the mid, the usual back, um, sorry, usual midfield. Leon Falk at the left, and Brujo at the six, Ali at the right, and Gazak at the tip of the diamond with Carranza and Burke as our forwards. Uh, and then, of course, you had Sergio Santos coming off the bench alongside uh, Paxton Aronson um, and uh, oh, Jack McGlynn as well. Um, all right, so what I kind of want to start off with here, guys, um, is your first off your takeaway uh, for this match. And, and Zach, you can start off here. Uh, your takeaways from Saturday's match against Minnesota. Uh, the only takeaway that really matters because it was a continuation of last season was that Baiza should not be starting anymore. Um, <laughs> that's basically everything else is a wash because it's week one. Um, I tweeted out uh, after week one when I saw everyone overreacting, like there were so many teams that made the playoffs that like, drew to teams that were like 10th, 11th in the, in the conference. Um, I'm pretty sure someone lost to Cincinnati. I think it was Nashville um, week one last week, last year. Um, And Nashville obviously made it to conference semifinal against us. uh, And Cincinnati won the wooden spoon. So week one is not an indication of how the season is going to go by any stretch except if you are Olivier and Baizo, because uh, he did the same thing he did at the uh, conference championship game last year where he got lackadaisical. He whiffed on a clearance. Someone dribbled in behind him, crossed the ball for a tap in. Uh, and it happens just way too often where he loses a run. He loses his mark. Um, he gets dribbled by so on and so forth. And, and it's just an issue that, that can be easily fixed by just not playing him. So I think that Nathan Harriel should be starting sooner rather than later. Uh, I don't know if we see him against Montreal, but even Jim mentioned Baizo's mistake in his press conference. So um, I know it's on his radar. So hopefully the switch comes uh, comes swiftly. Uh, and and, uh, and I, well, I guess we'll, we'll you know we'll talk about this back line as well. And obviously, Baizo was the subject of a lot of criticism a lot of talk over the past uh, past couple of days um 
I'm I'm for me personally, I, I I'm curious to see what Jim thinks in, in as far as the training goes because we also we know how much he puts in uh, how much stock he puts into how much you put into training throughout the week leading up to the match. And for Olivier, look, we know we kind of talked about this last week as well. Uh, the leash is pretty pretty short with this with this young guy here. And look, I, I don't know what Nathan has because I think both the guys have similar strengths. I think they're really good at getting up in the pitch. I think Nathan, Nathan's speed is really dangerous, but it's about getting back and defensively. Um, uh, Franco Pani really abused Mbizo all match long, I would say. Um, and they didn't even goal, go down. They barely went down Kai's side at all. Like yeah, they were just like, I wouldn't, we know why the weak, would you? Yeah, I know. We know the weak spot. We're just going to keep going and going and going. They did. Kai was shutting it down. Like yeah. Kai had, he, he was fine on his own. Yeah, I mean, and, and on that, um, on that, I mean, that was uh, like I was misread on Mbizo and Franco Pani, perfect spot there. And then you you put and I and shouts out to Kevin Kincaid, he did a great job of dissecting yeah. this goal. Um, that that at once that happened, that really put Glesnes and Elliot in tough spots. And then Kai Wagner, I I said that he probably should have a better space recognition. I mean, there was so much space at the top of the box. I, I in my opinion, I thought he should have came up, but regardless, that play starts with Mbizo's mishap there. Yeah. Yeah, um, sure. but, but, uh, Justin, I, I guess I want to ask you, man, like with the Bizo, like, should, should we keep going with him? Should we give him more opportunities? At what point is enough, enough, enough? Cause dude, the Eastern conference final game, that, that was a, that was a big one, bro. Yeah, no, it, listen, it was, it was bad. And I remember like watching that goal happen. It, Bizo again, horrible space recognition whiffs on it. And, and I think if he, if he runs with that ball, I think he defends it well. I think he's trying to cut these passes off, and some plays just don't call for that. He he messes up. Frank Aponte gets him behind, and when that happens, it forces Glesnes to then have to go at Frank Aponte. So then you're dragging your center back out. Elliot has to cover because you had, I believe, it was Debossi where someone else was right in the box there. So he has to cover him. So Kai, I think by the time that ball gets played in, there's not a lot Kai yeah. can do there. Yeah. I mean, if anything, it's if anything, it's Leon's guy to to cover, like to yeah, because track. Lord was higher up in the box when that ball comes in, and then he just rifles it. Like that was it. It was within a, a second or two, that ball's out, and that ball was lasered for the top of the net. Now, I just like, I mean, it's early in the season, and that's okay. And I don't think Nate gets thrown into the fire against Montreal. But I think if it starts to persist, Jim, I mean, he said the fact that Jim has it on his radar is the key that he's aware of it. Yeah. I think he likes to give things a few games and see how it works. Because again, early in the season, not that it doesn't matter, but like, I mean, there's a reason why a lot of us have, you know, Toronto making the playoffs is because. Even if they have a, a, a for first half of the season, with the team coming in, there's likely to miss to make the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Seattle does it every year, basically, where they'll have a, a crappy first half of the year, and then second half of the year they come and they they end up being like the three seed. So I'm not as worried, but I think Jim Jim will give it a few games, and if towards the end of the month, I don't if he's not still playing well, I think you'll see more of Nate. Yeah, I I agree, man, and I I think that's the way you got to go. Give him a couple games, and he he he's I, I'm sure he knows. Like I'm not, I'm sure Jim is not you know he's not discussing this with Olivia. I mean he's sure he knows that. Listen, if you don't get this straightened out, if you don't get, prove your performance, you're going to get bent. It's tough because I don't know if Nate's exactly ready for that. Like I said, like I feel like they both have similar strengths. I think Nate probably has a little more speed than him, but it's all about getting back, and that's the tough part of playing fullback within the system. I felt like in the first half of the problem too, like the, the fullbacks weren't getting up high enough and creating that without wide. But I think I thought that got uh, that got better. And I'm not, and again, we're not we we're not going to worry about that. But uh, Zach, why don't we put why don't we put Glesnes at fullback? You know, he he, he can cross the ball. <laughs> I don't know if he's got the I don't know if he's got the pace to do that job. You know, nah. he's not the quickest guy pace, in the world. Not that kind of pace. He's not the I'll, quickest guy. Um, yeah, I just I mean I, I wouldn't mind it. Totally kidding. Um, although although like. I was saying uh, pre-show, like, there's no reason, there's no reason why we're crossing the ball from 40 yards out every time our fullbacks get it. Like, go end line, 
create one twos down the right side and cross it low and hard towards the PK spot. That's where goals are scored, man. Not these hopeful balls into just a group of big bodies. Like it, it doesn't work very often that someone gets on the end of it and directs it towards goal because everyone's like, at least if you go end line, you could have like defenders facing the wrong way. You could ca- cause own goals, like easy tappings for your guys, deflections that just go in. If you cross it into like that, middle area in between the PK spot and the 18, like the odds of it going in the net are, are not at, not nearly as high as, as if you're crossing it from deeper areas. Um, so that's something I'd love to see change because it really fr- has frustrated me the past year and a half. Um, it, it's, it's like very 2018 union with the crosses, but like when we talked about how Baizo played and we talked about a pre-show by those crosses were God awful. Horrible. I mean, it, it, every Everything time was just he, bad on Saturday he, for him. He had he had time, he had space to to bring it in, and he would take these far crosses that wouldn't even be get to the box, but really wouldn't even beat the first defender. You always got to beat the first defender. Kai always. at least like Kai's were just missing people. Like there were runners in the box, which is more than we can see from last year. And yeah, that's true. they were still pretty good crosses and Minnesota was defending well. It was, I mean, he was squeezing those in. So the right side, I mean, last year was not as big of an issue, even with Ali slowing down. Now it, it's why I'm leaning towards, in, like I said, in a few games, throwing Nate in because yeah, he's young, but he has an ability to get back. Like he understands as a fullback while he can get up. His responsibility is to defend. Yeah, I, I agree with you guys. I agree. Um, when I look at the midfield on uh, on Saturday, I, I know Zach might feel some type of way about this, but I felt like El Brujo was the engine. He really was, to me, the best player on the pitch through 90 minutes. Um, defensively, I mean, I, I'm sure you guys saw the clip on Twitter. Uh, El Brujo just like shoving. Oh, Reynoso, Reynoso shoulder to shoulder. Beautiful. Perfect. Like textbook, what you should do as a defender. And Reynoso looks up at the at the ref, and the ref's like, he literally just points to his shoulder and goes, like that was as clean as it gets. Yeah, there was no foul there at all. Um, I I just think like it's so funny because I've seen like people say that Brujo they thought Brujo played really well, and then I've seen people that think Brujo played horribly. Now I'm like in the middle. Like I don't think Brujo was like outstanding but i also don't think he was the worst player ever um no not not remotely um no that's the reserve for bison zach here, um, here's here, zach here's what i'll say real quick well i'll say real quick for you in that first half when the, to, to start off i felt like there wasn't a lot of energy in general no it looked now to be to be fair i like have rewatched. i would say like i only got to watch 20 minutes of the game like total um when it was on and then i rewatched probably like 60 minutes so i don't have a full picture so just mm-hmm. keep that in mind when i when i talk go ahead <laughs> <laughs> now i was just thought, listen I, I felt like he really created that spark and that energy for this team because like i said just for like i would say up until that goal the energy kind of wasn't there for that team and and i mean justin you can attest i mean the crowd was was pretty into it you know they were excited after what happened last year they were ready for this season so the crowd was there and and, and i felt like everyone or was just waiting for them to kind of, you know, just pick it up, you know, play union soccer, essentially. And I, I thought El Brujo kind of started that, and, and he was just all over the pitch. Obviously, look, the bonehead moves. He, he got carded, right? He got carded in, in this game. And, that's usual. Like, what like, a that's story. That's story like, right? and that's Dude, I should have made the bet, man. I should have made that bet, man. Anytime yellow, El Brujo, first match, 100% I, I mean, guaranteed. the funny thing was, <laughs> the ref was kind of holding yellows for a while. Like, he... He let a lot go to start, and then at a certain point, and and it, it bugs me when refs do this, where they'll wait a long time and let a lot play, and then in a span of like ten minutes, you'll see like five cards, and it's like, well, wait a minute, like you didn't card that foul in the first half, but you're now it, it, it didn't make much sense. But no, I I agree on the the fact that Brujo, listen. For me, Brujo at his best is when you're not really complaining or praising him. When he's just there, when he's 
driving the midfield in terms of breaking up plays and giving the ball off. That's it. That's what I want out of him, and that's what he was doing. He was doing that to a T. He was he was breaking up a lot of the – I mean, like I said, Reynoso had a decent game, but to the point that I, you know, that I wrote in my preview article and then I said on the pod last week, stopping Reynoso was key. And Reynoso really didn't get going. He it was a very stop start. And but on the other hand, Daniel Gazdag, oh my lord. Oh my Lantis. He looked fantastic. I I He met honestly, someone. In yeah, in like what, like 65 minutes. What I saw from him is a, a continuation of and almost an evolution on top of last year. And we talked about it, but the biggest difference is you see what happens when he has strikers. Yes. I can play combinations. Yes. The biggest thing that, that Gazeg was willing to do was he, he wanted the ball. He wanted the ball. He, he was dropping it deeper for it. You also had Carranza dropping deep to link up and people go, Oh, a striker dropping deep 40 yards is not a big deal. Yes, it is for an attacking Sorry. mid when they're trying to get the play going, and it helps. I mean, there were a lot of, honestly, when when when, when Ua comes into the lineup, him, Carranza, him and Carranza with Gazdag, I think is going to be dangerous. It's and from fun, what man. I saw in this game, even with Corey Burke, I think with the striker options we have, I think this feeds well into Gosdog's game, which he wants to do this combination. He wants to give those one twos. He wants to put guys in position for those crosses because when he played it out wide, yeah, while you know Baizo and something were sometimes crossing it from like thirty yards out, most of the time that ball was just outside the box, and those are the crosses you want to see. Those are the ones that go out for corners. Those are the ones that force the goalie to come out, like. Those are the plays that I wanted to see. And yes, while it was a draw, I was very happy with the way he played and combined with the striker core. Absolutely, man. Um, one other uh, player I really want to mention in, in this midfield um, is Leon Flock. There was a lot of talk, uh, especially on social media as well. Um, the discussion of whether we should be starting McGlynn or Flock. Um, look, what I said, and I said this on Twitter, and it was kind of in, you know, in likes to be just a little humorous. Uh, but I, I mentioned that Leon Flock is the union version of Matisse Thibault to the, of the Philadelphia 76ers, both gifted as far as their defense goes. Um, but they lack offensively, and it's not to say that they can't develop it. I both I both believe that Leon and Matisse will develop some sort of an offensive game. But, I mean, gentlemen, last year's stats, and he played a lot of soccer, right, last year? Um, one goal with one assist. I, I mean, I'm not expecting him to be scoring five to, to six goals, but... I mean, the assist number is something I'm a little bit more worried about as far as a shuttler goes. Um, but for you, I, I, for what I'll say, one more point is you, obviously, Justin, you mentioned Ua coming. I, I think that he's going to help that as well, that link up play between the back and, and, uh, and the front as well. Uh, but he's, Leon's got to get more active and, and be more aggressive on the attack. That, that's kind of what I'll say. Um, J- Justin. Also, happy birthday, Leon. I, yes. Bye. 21. 21. I hate to bring that up on that. Buy a legal, buy a legal beer here. <laughs> I, I hated to bring it up on his birthday. I, I, I noticed it after I put it out there, but hey, we we got to we got to discuss the truth, right? Uh, but Justin, um, Leon, where are you at with man? Like, like how you, where are your where's your feelings towards Leon right now? Um, I love Leon. We're not and, benching him, obviously. And and I think the reason that that I'm not as, I yes, it would be great if he could develop a bit more of an offensive game, but. I don't like again. I don't think that's why you have him. You have him as the insane engine of the midfield because yes, Brujo can be all over the place, but Leon is definitely your most athletic midfielder by far. There's a reason he's always the one that is the farthest back on the corners is because he's the one. If there's a counter, how many times was he? He was hauling ass to stop those counters and to slow it down and to allow people to get back. And you, and Jim loves that kind of a player. It's why he, 
you know, with that midfield with behind God's like, you know, he's going to put Leon in there because he knows with, even with Ali's slowing down a bit, you have Leon to cover a lot of that. Leon is all over the field. He's running left and right. He, he is driving the, I think the midfield in terms of just cleaning up. And it's always good to have that kind of a, you know, I almost want to call it, you know, that what used to be kind of like a stopper. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Because that's like, and I think if you were playing like a four, two, three, one, he'd be right next to, to Brujo because he's the guy that's allows Brujo to, to move up, to yeah. play those passes, to drive it. And Leon, he, because he knows Leon is by, back there to just clean up the messes, to, to cover yeah. the, the, the area in front of the center backs and having that type of a player is beyond valuable. Yeah, and 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 Zach, what what I wanted to ask you, my man, like Ali in his heyday, obviously had a little more speed, but Ali in general, like he could play a lot of different positions, and and it kind of reminds me of Leon because I I do feel like Ali, if he wanted to, could play as a right back, and he can create that that you know that attack out uh, on the width, solid defensive player. I mean, remember when we were in our four two three one days, Ali was playing as one of those holding guys back there, like. Don't you think like, Leon could probably like emulate his game a little after Ali? Yeah, and I think like obviously Ali, as he's gotten older, has gotten a little bit better in the final third. Like he scores for his position a good amount of goals, um, and for like what Ali is, um, I think the thing with Leon is until uh, Brujo and or uh, Kai leave, whether that's in the summer or in the winter. Um, I think playing him is is going to be or should be game dependent. Um, and what I mean by that is like when we play San Jose, we're going to have the ball like a lot. So <laughs> I feel like Jack McGlynn should be on the field because he's very good on the ball. Um, now, that's not to say that Leon isn't, but it, I, when we have the ball, we want to have creative players on it. Um, and I think Jack is just like way more creative than than Leon is, especially in the final third. Now, what I will say also is, like, there's a reason Leon is always the guy who has the most miles at the end of every game because, uh, like Justin said, he's everywhere. Uh, He does a lot of stuff. Um, So when we play against teams like, I don't know, say, uh, New York City FC or Atlanta or even maybe Columbus or New England, like, you want a guy like Leon on there who's going to be able to track a lot of – or cover a lot of ground and track people um, because – those are teams that will either will either split possession with or who will have more possession than we will. And when we don't have possession, Leon's a guy I want on the field. Um, now, like I said, when we play against inferior opponents like San Jose, when we play Cincy, when we play Charlotte, um, like we should be dominating those teams possession wise. And if we have the ball fifty five to sixty five percent of the game, I think Jack McGlynn is a much better option in that spot because of what he can do in terms of playing killer passes and breaking down a defense and kind of stuff like that. Um, now when Brujo and or um, uh, Kai leave, if they, if they end up doing so, I think Leon fits really well into one of those six or left back spots. Um, it's crazy. I think preferably six, just cause that keeps him a little bit more centralized uh, and able to cover more ground. Um, but he's he's a very uh, Swiss Army knife type player, and, and yeah. it's it's they're very beneficial. But but I think because of his lacking in the final third, I think that a game dependent sit start regiment with him and and uh, Jack McGlynn is is something that we could see. Absolutely, man, uh, gentlemen, Michael, ooh ah. I, I, I'm I'm hoping I say his name right now. No, I believe it's similar to Michael. So that's what he was. Michael Ua. Michael that's Ua. Was, that's how he was saying it. And for those who are not uh, watching, Michael Ua, of course, this was on the Philadelphia Union social media this morning, uh, in practice, in training, in Chester, Pennsylvania, with the with the guys, with the boys. So it's definitely. I great. love the I love the 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 the, the teal blue cleats. Yeah, Honestly, man's already got some swag. Solid, I didn't even mention solid. it. Look at that. And uh, it looks like Cole Turner's got the same. Uh, yeah, I would say well. like similar, like almost like orange accents on the side. I, I like the, I like it. Uh, Look at you. You're not the. You're not just a kick guy. You're the boot guy. Oh too. no, trust me. I cl- <laughs> kits and cleats are or kits and boots, as Steve would say, 
<laughs> are my are my my thing. I I love I love talking about about those things. It's just yeah. And those are those are solid. There's at least solid bright one color. I'm okay with. I don't oh, even yeah. really play anymore, and I have three pairs that I could wear on a on a moment's notice. So, oh yeah, yeah those I'm, Wolverine ones. Oh my! I'm a God, big like... I'm a big boot guy. I love I well, love them. Well, guys, you you know who probably likes boots as well. Our next guest. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, of course, uh, we are in Montreal week. We're facing off against uh, Club de Foot Montreal this upcoming Saturday. We'll be in Montreal. Really jealous for those who are attending because I would love to visit Montreal. But besides the point, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to obviously preview our match against Club de Foot Montreal. And to join us, please welcome from the Balls Round Montreal, a recurring guest. Ladies and gentlemen, Eve Julia. Eve, what's going on? How are you? You're, oh, you're muted, Eve. <laughs> that's that's it's all right it's 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 the worst part about this there we go now i'm alive i hope Can you hear me? <laughs> you're live yeah absolutely <laughs> excellent hi guys how are you we're great we're uh we're ready for montreal we're, we're, we're ready uh to, to, it's always tough for us as you know um yeah. but we're ex- we're always excited and we're playing in the the olympique is that what it's called the big oh yes <laughs> i'm so excited i'm so that's really awesome i just saw that i was like wow i'm really playing there okay now Just what's, what's it's, it's too dang cold. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's freezing season. here right now. It's I think minus fifteen or sixteen degrees right now. <laughs> it would be cold. Yeah, we're not trying to we're not tr- we're not trying to pull <laughs> the US against uh, Honduras here. No, no. Oh my gosh, that was wild. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> yeah. But I you don't think the players will be player too player. excited. No, yeah, exactly yeah. exactly. No, the the Big O is a really interesting stadium. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen any of Montreal's games when they're played at the Big O, but um, it's weird. It it's reminds weird. me of like Veteran Stadium Philly back in the day. Like it's well, that the weird type play there. of it's that mm-hmm. weird type of turf. It, it yeah. just it throws it like the the optics of it, especially with the way they run the stadium. It just throw it's it's very disconcerting on TV. Mm-hmm. At least it's not like Gillette, is it? Like the turf? No, it's, it's worse. It's, very old school turf. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. I see what you're saying now. Okay. Wow. Okay. Well, hey. Hopefully, no one gets hurt on um, this upcoming Saturday. Oh, we well, survived uh, one match. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Eve. Before we get to the club, uh, you know, obviously, you know, big fans of the cl- uh, balls round. Much. How's how's everyone doing on the balls round? Really well. Really well. Um, we've kind of adapted similarly to you guys, how you guys are that right now this year we we've started going live which is hey. interesting <laughs> cool. um yeah which is wild no uh, we're, we're having a really good a really good start to the year back and forth and um everything's everything's going well i know you guys know sam and as well yes. our, our third co-host pat uh, hattie as well awesome uh big big greeting style all, all from uh, the balls round for sure um, well, listen, it's, it's, it's an interesting year for you guys. Champions League again, uh, mm-hmm. doing, doing well. Congratulations. Thank uh, you. On to Cruz Azul. That should be, that should be a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I kind of wanted to start off by asking you, obviously we had our first taste last year. We had our struggles adapting. And, mm-hmm. and I think, honestly, I think at this point, if you're an MLS club going to CCL, just forget about the season. Just, just focus on CCL. Um, kind of well, how's Montreal been adapting this year in this incarnation of CCL mm-hmm. and with the, with the scheduling as well, the MLS. Yeah, so, you know, it's definitely always a challenge, especially when you come into CCL because you're facing off against teams that are have been in their full season and you're in still in preseason mode. Um, One thing I thought was really interesting preseason was that when Montreal and and I believe it was Philadelphia played their friendly, they played for 120 minutes instead of 90, which I thought was interesting. and, And I couldn't help but wonder if there was a a CCL mind frame there, even though I know Philly wasn't, wasn't competing. Um, so I thought that was maybe a good hope for preparation, but as we saw on Sunday's game versus Orlando, that struggle is still very real. <laughs> Trying to the balance, CCL you know, curve is, yeah. is catches everybody. Yeah. Right the union yeah. struggled, I would say at I least know. through April last year. And it just, to it's command, tough yeah. prioritizing. That's the thing. You got you like, especially with a tough matchup against Cruz Azul. Mm-hmm. That's gonna take a lot, and so I think Nancy is gonna have to really look. And this is probably early part of the season, which at this point I said doesn't really matter. And go, can I sacrifice a few MLS games to try to advance in CCL? 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And I, I can't help but disagree, especially for Montreal. A lot of their early season games are road games because Stade Zaputo, you can't play there until the weather's half fit. So usually it does have kind of a road heavy season to start. So sacrificing as well road games would not be the end of the world. Unfortunately, obviously the, the Philadelphia game is going to be a home game for Montreal, which normally you do want to put emphasis on winning. It's, does it, is the Big O used for anything else? Vaccination. <laughs> That's yeah, it right say, now. <laughs> it doesn't seem like it's used for much else. No, it has a really problematic roof. Um, I'm sure you probably saw in passing that the, the match last week against Santos Laguna had to be postponed because of snow buildup, which is ridiculous because it's Monday Montreal. Time. Yeah, it has a really horrible roof. It was... Um, Whoever designed it for the Olympics back in the day was not thinking about long term, I don't think. And, you know, unfortunately, the budget for renovations just it keeps getting pushed and pushed and pushed to the side. Oh so my God. it unfortunately doesn't serve too many uses. Occasionally, like the Blue Jays have come and done a preseason game True. at the Big O since the Expos, you know, died. Um <laughs> <laughs> Although he put that uh, die, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. Well, yeah, especially there, there was like rumor of a, a shared thing with Tampa, which has gone yeah. out the window as well. So yeah, I, I, I want, I'm gonna say die. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, well, let's let's discuss that that match uh, on Sunday. Yeah. against Orlando for you guys. Um, it wasn't a pretty showing no. uh, for you guys, but uh, kind of you know your takeaways kind of went down um, in Orlando. It was kind of the exact opposite of what we saw uh, midweek versus Santos Laguna. So, you know, midweek Santos versus Santos Laguna, Montreal was absolutely dominant. And, it, you know, every player had their best game. You know, we knew obviously there was going to be some fatigue going into the match because of the, the emotions in that midweek matchup and the fact that it's still early season finding your legs. So there wasn't a huge surprise. As well, um, Rudy Camacho, who would normally be starting in the middle of a three-man defense, was suspended from a red card picked up against Orlando in the last game of last season, oh as you do God. in MLS. <laughs> so, I forgot that. You guys ended the season, and then you started this year with Orlando. Yeah, yeah, and they, they did a sturdy both times. <laughs> <laughs> um so, you know, we knew that there was going to be some shakeups in, in defense and that we wouldn't have the, the ideal starting defensive lineup um, wing left wing back if Wilfred Nancy chooses to go with a three center defender. Position left wing back is still really problematic for Montreal. Um, right now, there's no true partner for Victor Wanyama. And I'm, I'm like rattling off a list of Montreal problems. And it's kind of like all of these problems just stood out so glaringly on Sunday that I was I was really hoping that uh, Olivier Renard, the sporting director, was uh, going through his phone <laughs> as the game was playing on. <laughs> anyway, um, you know, the game against Orlando got burned on some really silly goals. Um, you know, they tried to play out the back three times in a row. Should have been scored on one of those times, tried again, and coughed up a really easy turnover that they got punished for. Um, you know, Fagundo Torres, he looks like the real deal for Orlando. He's yeah. really dynamic and exciting to watch. Um, and Montreal, you know, struggled to cope with that. I think we did see some some heavy legs. And then unfortunately, Ramel Kyoto, he's gonna he's gonna have one of those moments every now and then. <laughs> he picked up an incredibly silly. Uh, red card, incredibly silly. Um, I don't know if you guys saw it, but it oh, was, no. uh, I was that's oh, look I was at look at Justin's name. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah, that's what it's for. <laughs> and it like I I said to the guys like because it's a meme. Eve. <laughs> well, because it's I mean, amazing on, on, on Sunday, like Sunday afternoon. You know, it was mm -hmm. you know uh, you know just sitting around. I'm like, oh, there's other, I'm the last games one, three, five, so, like so. Easy, easy day to just sit, sit yeah. watch them on the And I saw the tackle. It clean, clean as anything. Yeah. Jensen isn't in the play. Kyoto gets up. And dude, you've played in CONCACAF. Like, yeah. It, you, 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 there's a reason CONCACAF is a noun and a verb. Yeah. Because it just, it, like, it, you know what to expect. Mm -hmm. And he does that. And, like, he seems so surprised when the red card came out. And it's I know. like, it, if it, if you clench it, your fists, you're done. And that's the thing. He like he if if he had just player. pushed like that, he would have been okay. 
Yeah, like Probably, he's such a good like player, other. but it's yes. like he's good for those moments. He did it against the Union in 2020. Yeah, uh, so that was his weird Henry elbow with, thing. With an elbow, like a <laughs> yeah. hard elbow. And it's yeah. just like, dude, what are, like, you can't, like, especially with the NRA, you can't think that that's a good thing. And no. especially with the striker situation, I mean, you guys had to sign Guy Kamara essentially as an emergency with yep. Mason Toy still coming back from injury. Like, yeah. It, You've put the you, he they put them in a bad situation mm-hmm. to start an already you know mixed result year. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Um, it was super disappointing. And you know, after the game, Wilfred Dunsey in his press conference, uh, you know, he said he was going to talk to him, and I said, "Oh no, he's getting called to the principal's office." <laughs> <laughs> Definitely don't want to do that. Well, well, we'll leave. Um, we have to be honest with you. So we did our MLS preview show uh, before the start of the season. Mm-hmm. Um, believe it or not, one of us on this panel was really high on Montreal. <laughs> like, super to the point where we're like, really? Fourth in the East. Wow. Zach, fourth <laughs> in the East. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so touched. <laughs> <laughs> What are you drinking over there? <laughs> Let's all get some of that. Because I think the rest of us had Montreal in that 7 to 10 range of yeah. like just missing the playoffs. Mm-hmm. And I, what I said was that it's the problem that is going to be for Saturday. The lack of depth with Stryker and how healthy can Mason Toy stay. Because if Mason Toy stays healthy, He's you guys dangerous. are probably have a pretty good shot to make the playoffs. Mm-hmm. But that seven to ten range is also including Chicago, Columbus. Like mm-hmm. there's a few teams that are middle of the road that it's again top four, I would say in the East, not solidified, but you know that there's that top or top tier, and then mm-hmm. you have five through ten where it's like it's a lot of similar teams. Yeah, so it's a bit of a bloodbath. Five teams, it's it's a lot to to you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, well, hey, that's a lot better than a lot of folks tend to position Montreal, even seventh to tenth. That's better than actually even I position them most days. So I mean, hey, I have them far from the wooden spoon because Cincinnati and, and Charlotte are gonna and San Jose are gonna take uh, that out. I know that's gonna be an epic battle. Um, <laughs> yes, yes, I know. Last last year, practically everybody had Montreal placed dead last, and you know, I think I think they did still. I mean, they they brought it to the decision day even if yeah. they did finish 10th last year. So I think I think a lot of people are a lot more on the, the Montreal bandwagon, if you will. Um, not to the point of fourth, maybe, but... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, the reason being, right, last year between fourth and 10th, there were, I think it was like a four-point difference between yeah. fourth and 10th last year. Okay, and I'm really, really high on Jordy Mahalovich. No, 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 I, you love Jordy Mahalovich. I do, I do. I really, I think he's phenomenal. Although, how long he's there? Is- he might mm-hmm. leave in the summer, which might put a damper on my mm-hmm. plans. So that that <laughs> might change some things. But if he stays, and Mason Toy, who I know personally, does, stays healthy, um, and he, like you said, he's very dangerous. Um, I think they could. I I don't see why they can't finish fourth because I think that. But that fourth to tenth range is going to be as close as it was last year in terms of points. Um, because I don't think New England is as strong as they were last year. Um, I think I New York City is going to have a fall off because of CCL. Um, and I, yeah, I just think I think that that range is going to be really tight again. So, like you said, decision day. I mean, if they win that, they make the playoffs last year, and if they gain another point, they could finish fourth last year. So it's I don't think it's as crazy as everyone's saying, but I mean <laughs> we'll we'll see. We'll it's see. Tough, yeah. man. It's just tough. And if it I'm is. right, I'm a genius. So it's there's that. There you go. <laughs> well, you always gotta take those risks with those predictions yeah, every season. There's always because they're thing. never right. Because there's, there's always a Colorado. Right. There's I, always I, a Colorado, think, right? You know, there's always a yeah, rapid. Yeah, yeah. I, I think we were only like I think I came semi close at the union being like I had me third in their second, like outside mm-hmm. of that. The rest of the East was completely, sh- mostly like oh. after four it was shot. For- yeah. we, just don't, we just don't want the one seed. That's all we do. We just don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> it's always tough. It's always tough. Uh, Eva, I wanted to ask you, mm-hmm. um, Kai Kamar is, I feel like, if you don't love him as an MLS, MLS person, legend. Yeah, like he's legend. like, for, he's for the hockey people who might be listening to this from Montreal, he's the Yaramir Yager of the MLS, I like to say, or play, essentially played everywhere, still pretty uh, darn good. What was the fans' reaction towards Kai signing. We, Montreal fans 
love Kai Kamara. Montreal fans have wanted Kai Kamara in a Montreal kit for five or six years. Um, so have I. Yeah. Gonna, I. Put me on that list. Too. I wanted him <laughs> to be in kit for a long time. It's like, just, just put it up and let him just – his amount of header goals is yeah. just unreal. I know, and that's exactly what Montreal needs so badly and has needed for years and years and years after the Matteo Mancosu and the Maxi Rudy days of terrible Ooh. striker luck. <laughs> I will never forget, and Bjorn Janssen as well last year, unfortunately, and he, he is still here technically. Um, <laughs> no, but he's su- he's super beloved by Montreal. You know, he got a huge cheer when he came on versus Santos Laguna um, later yeah. in the game on Wednesday. Uh, he did a, a really cute video, like, greeting the Montreal fans in French with his kids in French as well. And they were sliding in snow. It, it was, oh, yeah. Awesome. But yeah, he's he's been super charismatic, like no matter where he's been, yeah. you know? I, I, think that's the, I think that's the misconception is with someone who's, who's at this point, you can count the, you know, the amount of teams more that he hasn't been on than he has been on. <laughs> mm-hmm. But what, what I've always said is the reason I've won him is the reason he's so sought after is because he scores goals. And there's a reason he's very high up there in terms of the t- overall MLS, you know, goal totals is because like he, he puts it in key situations and listen, he's been on some bad teams. And so when you're in a bad team and a good team that might make the playoffs wants you it, in this league, you kind of don't have a say it's you're going where you're traded. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's, it's a, it's a solid pickup, but this question is again, if, it's how healthy this Mason Toy stay because Kai Kamara is 38 years old. So that's the the side of yes, having him as a option of a bench piece is is amazing. It is mm-hmm. more you know assurance than you've had in the past. But if you were relying on him at this point, yeah. like if, if, we're if up the gets, creek. <laughs> yeah, if that's the point. Then you're up shit's creek without a paddle, and <laughs> the season not lost, but it could get dangerous at that point if that's you're relying on him well i mean montreal found themselves relying on you know bjorn Janssen and sunusi ibrahim to to function at the striker role last year because mason toy and ramel kyoto wound up you know injured or on international duty for large parts of the season so in my opinion having kai kamara does at least put montreal in a slightly better position though you're right at his age 37 we can't expect him to do 90 minutes wednesday saturday wednesday saturday yeah that is very true uh real quick before we get to lineups and predictions um so the first uh montreal canadians match that was without fans it was actually against the flyers and i was covering that one what is the fan situation right now in montreal Okay, so um, as you know, Montreal has several distinct supporter groups. <laughs> We're allowed to have fans at the, at the game if that's if that's okay. what you're asking. There are yes. going to be fans at Full the match. Full capacity? No, half capacity. Okay. But okay. at the Big O, anyway, I mean, the Big O has a capacity of 60,000, so. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, so you can get a lot of people in there. <laughs> yeah, no, we, we can get a lot. I mean, we even got 13,000 for the uh, CCL match, which got postponed today, so it's not bad. There you go. Yeah. Well, there. No, but yeah, there there will be fans. the The politics, of course, will always be in play. But uh, oh, yeah. in between the fan I, I, groups and the ownership and all that, but yeah. um, the fans will be there. <laughs> very, <laughs> very delicate situation. <laughs> That's oh, of course. Kindly. <laughs> yes, of course, of course. Uh, well, let's let's get to it. Um, it, we'll, we'll discuss what could the potential lineup look like for Montreal um, this okay. upcoming Saturday. Okay. Um, I can do it pretty easy, I think, back to front. So we have Sebastian Breza starting in net. He's been confirmed by Wilfred Nancy as the uh, starting goalkeeper. It's basically his position until he loses it. Um, I expect to see a back three, and I would sincerely hope that the back three would be Kamal Miller, uh, Rudy Camacho, and Alistair Johnston as the right center back. He played as right wing back on Sunday, and I don't think it was a particularly conclusive performance. No offense, because we do we we love him as well in Montreal. He's he's much loved quickly. Um, then of course we'll have Victor Wanyama, um, obviously at the at the sixth spot. Um, really, it could be almost anybody next to him. It's been Ismail Kone uh, for the past two matches, but it could be Rita Zuhir as well. I kind of want to say Rita Zuhir would get the start next to Victor Wanyama. Um, he's a he's a little bit more steady, although Ismail Kone had a super flashy performance versus Santos Laguna. Um, 
but his performance against uh, against Orlando, unfortunately, was uh, a lot more what you'd expect of somebody's first game. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, we have our wingbacks, which are basically names drawn out of a hat, I'm pretty sure. Um, <laughs> it, it could be Lassie Lapalainen on the left. Um, okay. I've hated him in that position myself, but Wilfred Nancy seems to continue to try it to test my nerves. Um, <laughs> and... Anyway, Zoran Basong started at that position and it wasn't good on the defensive front, even if it was interesting on the offensive front. And Montreal, well, uh, I mean, that's the point going forward um, without Ramel Kyoto there. <laughs> so uh, maybe last It is. Yeah, maybe Lassie Lapalainen to start on the left, Mathieu Chouanier to start on the right wing back. Of course, then Georgi Mihailovic in the 10 spot. And I would expect to see Joaquin Torres maybe start with Kai Kamara. Maybe oh. he might have a start get like 16 minutes in his legs, maybe. Just because Justin's uh, team's gonna be playing, that's why they're gonna start a guy come on. <laughs> exactly. Just just to like add some some salt to the wound. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a lot of fun. It'd be a lot of fun to watch him. Um, but but gentlemen, on our side here with the union, I, I would expect it to be a similar lineup. I think the main question would be is Michael Ua gonna get his first start? No, no, I, I think uh. I, I think realistically, like I said, he only started training today. I think you have him on the bench. I think you give him 15, 20 minutes to run out. But as I said, Carranza and Burke, with combining with Gazdog, created a lot of chances. And there was space available. The The thing is going to be, can Olivier and Baizo fix whatever crossing up issues again. He, yeah like b- between the crosses and some of the defensive positioning the Who's reason the they, didn't really, they didn't really go after Kai and so I see the lineup I, I'm going to say exactly. mostly identical the only only position I might see different depending on what what Jim wants out of the midfield I could see maybe a Leon for Jack McGlynn flip. And I think the reasoning for that would be if you want someone who has a little bit more going forward in terms of passing, because as we've seen, Jack McGlynn, even at a very young age, likes to get onto the ball and likes to help, you know, Gossack bring the ball up. And that's something more than that Leon can offer because Leon's the the little engine that could and cleaned up all the messes, but you can also bring him on as a sub, um, you know, if you have the game in hand. So I think it depends on how you want to really dominate the midfield because the union don't typically have a ton of possession. So they got to make do with the possession that they do have. And that's where I think McGlynn might be a little bit better suited than Leon in this situation. Be very you interesting wanna- to see. Yeah, I was going to say, you want to make sure um, whoever you put out in the midfield is able to play a shorter passing game because long over-the-top balls are going to bounce so weirdly the players will not be able to get at them. So just yeah, for reference, where, if that changes your where, mind. Well, no, and that's where I think Jack works better because yeah, he, okay. he's him and guys like both have those abilities to play those those 10- to 15-year passes that you need. And the biggest thing that I saw from Gazdag against Minnesota – was his ability to connect those one twos mm-hmm. with Carranza and Burke, and if they can get that going, th- that's dangerous. Because Not Corey Burke. Burke. No. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Corey Burke is back. The Montreal Killer is back. I know. Yeah. You need the score sheet already. Oh God. <laughs> and that's the thing. I think that's why I, 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 you leave him in and leave at least Uwa that's on the bench point. and have because. Again, Corey's history against Montreal is kind of hard to overlook. And at this point, with how well Carranza played, I, like I said, I think that could be, that could turn into a, I'm hoping that could t- turn into a permanent permanent signing because he showed that Miami had no idea what the fuck they were doing with him. And breaking Phil news, ladies and gentlemen. Coach, and we all know that's a, a god awful organization run from top to bottom. 
that hey they drew chicago come on now Justin. Hey, they, got a, no. they got a clean oh, sheet that's, a that's yeah, well no nah, listen theory. getting a clean sheet against a team with casper shabilko up top is not a AK game. Yeah, not I mean, a come on come on <laughs> see yes yeah, ak yeah we told you we told you <laughs> missing missing a sitter that should kill you four yards out plate. from four yards out I'm yeah, well, listen. Uh, we, I don't. I don't want to talk too much about Casper because we're going to start sounding like six trans on Ben's nose. But the tweet that we put up, I was a Chicago writer, Chicago fan. Oh my, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Casper's got to bury that. We told you like, so. Uh, and we're like, did you ever watch a Union game? Yeah. <laughs> if you had put half of those in, he'd be. He would have. Could have won the Golden Boot uh, last year, man. Oh man. Yeah, that was uh, that was a dire game. Oh my god, that was a brutal game. Yeah, it was very Absolutely. Yeah. And that was da- game daily for the union. Yeah. Oh, um, God. So that's so what I, we dealt with. So I guess my other question would be is mm-hmm. I, so Justin convinced me, I think we should start Corey Burke, but I was thinking Sergio starting over Corey. So does this mean Sergio doesn't even get on the pitch on on Saturday? Um, Probably not. I think you, you, you want to be, be careful with, with Sergio. On the turf, too. I think like, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm like. Turf. Yeah, Sergio's just really injury prone. So. for what, like 25, mm. 20, 25 minutes, and that's fine. But on this surface, I, I would not risk it. Yeah, I, I would not risk Sergio it at all. I, I, was, I, I, I'm, I'm in. I'm, I'm definitely in. Um, I think everything pretty much stays the same. Olivier, you are on notice. Yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe he he fan. doesn't start. We'll see. Um, him and him and Leon would be the two that I could see changing, like Justin That's, said. Yeah. Um, but other than that, it'll stay exactly. Is, the same. is Basong your left wing? Your your. Oh no! Okay, okay. It's the it's the names out of the hat. It could be Basong. It could be Lapalainen. It could be Schwanier moved over to the left. Um. There could be some other person who mysteriously appears at that position. I don't know. Um, just, just truly don't know. That's, that's, and that's, that's weird. That with weird that with Alistair <laughs> Johnston being a, 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 a the the third of the back three center backs because mm-hmm. I mean he thrived in Nashville going up the wings. So that I mean it, it. I know for Canada he typically plays as a wing back and no. Does he not play? I thought he was him and Alfonso Davies were the. It's usually uh, Rich Larea or yeah, Tijon Larea. Buchanan on the right wing back for Canada. Oh, He's been yeah. So they've yeah, really molded him into a, a yeah. I mean, huh, that's. I mean, I guess kind of out fullbacks these days can be kind of merged into a if you're doing a back three and you have someone. Kai Walker off. does it for England all the time. I was gonna say yeah. occasionally like Luke like there's there are fullbacks all the time that do that. So I, I guess that makes sense. It just yeah. seems surprising considering Nashville the way he was a pretty dominant. Uh, fullback for them they played more in a back four though than um so he had a lot more defensive responsibility you know as a fullback so i i think he's still a little bit more old school in that regard and that you know intense um offensive flair that you want your wingbacks to have in the modern game you know i mean he, he gets up there but sort of that final ball into the boxes is, is kind of what's lacking uh, the, Which the, is lacking the with Gattis all the other fullbacks too, so it's okay. The the we, we call that <laughs> the Ray Gaddis effect. Oh, hey. <laughs> oh we love Ray. Go there. but he wasn't known for his crosses. Oh, no, he went there. Oh, no, I think last year Montreal's two like regular starting fullbacks combined for a total of something ridiculous, like five <laughs> assists. Oh so. My God. I think and that yeah, uh, didn't Ty have that himself? I think I, think I had six last year. Yeah, oh and right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm like, oh god. Bad memories there. It's uh, tough to play a three back without consistent wing backs. Like that's, that's tough to do. Really it's is. one of my pet peeves with the way Will Fernandez has played, and he said, you know, preseason that he used a back three as a starting lineup more than he had wanted to last year, just like with various injury situations. But then. Three three matches in a row. They started with a back three, and again the the wing back has not been effective. I will say Matthias Schwanier as the right wing back because he plays as both did get a really nice assist in CCL, but uh, nonetheless, I mean, like I said, it's it's so few and far between. Yeah. It drives me no, the most important position in a formation like mm-hmm. that because it really exactly dictates, it really dictates how well you can go forward because they provide all the width. 
Mm-hmm. And if you don't have players you can provide with at a decent level, like you're going to struggle. No, exactly. And I mean, Montreal does have a solid midfield, um, you know, with Wanyama and Mihailovic. And then we, we're seeing some interesting stuff from um, the younger players who have come into play beside Wanyama. Um, so, I mean, they can play through the middle, but then what's the point in having your wing backs if you're going to try and build play through the middle? So okay. I just, I don't get it. No, that was, that was the union last year with the, when they had to do the Christmas tree. <laughs> you know, yeah. necessity for players that like Casper, who wasn't great at holding, uh, great at holding the ball up, but he couldn't get with the play. And that mm-hmm. was where the play kind of died. So yeah, if you can't get the width in the back three, that's kind of crucial because that's where a lot of your support comes both offensively mm-hmm. and defensively. So that's kind of crucial. So if you, if your wing backs are playing terribly, the system is going to kind of crumble on itself. Mm. Absolutely. All right. Well, it's uh, it's prediction time. Let's get straight to it. Eve, Saturday afternoon, some football up in the big O. What do you got? It's going to end with a zero for Montreal. Um, <laughs> I can tell you that right Why now. Why so positive, Eve? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, you know, I, we're going to have to send Kai Kamara out, I think, for however many minutes he's got in his legs. God love him. Um and like I, like I just made the case, no one's going to get a decent cross into his head. So <laughs> I have very little hope unless, you know, there's a nice own goal to save the day. That's, um, uh, don't put it past the union. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> no, that's not, that's not, no, last year did they concede? You guys had a late goal. It was one. I was one, to two, the... yes. Oh, my God. I drove nuts. God, uh, I, was, I think Freeze was starting, right? Was this Freeze starting that one? Yeah, it was a and Kai horrible coverage. It was bad. Yeah, Montreal got burned so many times, so they were due for one, like <laughs> late, 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 like that. But anyway, I digress. Um, I'm gonna say a one nil win for the Union. Of course, Corey Burke will be the goal scorer <laughs> who haunts my nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what about you, Zach? What do you see happening on Saturday? I totally agree. I don't know if Corey's necessarily going to be the goal scorer, but if his track record proves true, then he will be. But I, I think all I also think one zero union. Justin. Um, yeah, you know, I think Montreal on the road has always been a tough place. Um, history has shown, at least lately, it's been kind to us in the last few years. Prior to like 2018, Montreal was not a kind place uh, mm-hmm. to play at all. Um, but I think, uh, considering the track record, uh, <laughs> Scory Burke will uh, <laughs> will strike again. Um, but maybe Kai Kamara. I, uh, I want to no, say one I'm nothing, kidding. but I think I think there. I think Kai. I think Kai actually does get a, a header goal. I think it's two to one. Um, but I still think uh, Corey Burke haunts the the the, the nightmares of of the Montreal faithful, <laughs> and and shows why uh, he's gonna get the start in this game. Um, I think Ua comes off the bench. Um, I don't think he gets a goal, but I think he I think he's got some good chances. I think he shows why he's worth the three million dollar transfer. So who gets the second goal? Mm, uh... I think God's dog. And the I'm gonna start dog. with a. And I'm gonna say with a solid free kick because he had. Some oh, solid... I was gonna say Jack McGlynn on a free kick. No, it's a, it's a, uh, Daniel, Got now. Daniel had some solid, some solid crosses into the box. So I think he's, he's a he's a solid peak, he's a solid uh, free kick taker. Well, here, here I'll tell you this, guys. I agree, Justin two one, but I do think that Don Julian Carranza will get a goal, his first union goal. It's going to happen on Saturday. I'm going to tell you right now. And I, I think he was close. He was close. He was close. Uh, and I think I, I agree. I think as gets on the score sheet this, uh, this season as well. So it should be, it should be a really fun one. Uh, always fun against Montreal as well. Up the utmost respect towards the club, the fans, and of course the ball is round on his Montreal as well. Eve, where can people find the beautiful work of the balls round? You can find us on Twitter at TBIR Montreal. We have also started an Instagram at nice. TBIR Montreal. And, um, you know, we, we go out every Sunday and we watch a new episode every Sunday. We're live. And then we also release it in the audio formats on all your favorite platforms. 
Very nice, very nice. We'll we'll hope to be speaking to the the crew eventually on the line. Uh, but of course, oh for sure. To you no, for sure. Next time we face off, we'll definitely have to have to have you on for a chat. Absolutely, we're we're always welcome. We're, I mean, I'm sorry, we're always uh, happy to be on the. Uh, yes, you are always show. welcome. <laughs> I hope so. You are. You so. said. It. <laughs> you are for so. sure. Awesome stuff. All right, guys, that's gonna do it. For, guys. That's gonna do it for another episode of Dupe by the Ruth. Thank you so much, Steve, for hopping on in. Make sure you guys hit the like button, subscribe, and of course, make sure you subscribe to PSN Radio uh, to check out Dupe by the River on podcast form. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Zach Lobasso. That is Justin Double Fist, <laughs> Jess Steve Prideberg. And of course, I am El Parcero Philly. And we're telling you guys to do ball. We'll talk to you guys next week.